Welcome back everyone, or should I say, welcome to the original, where it all began, 46 miles from Las Vegas, Nevada. Chuck Green and Katie were escaping the outbreak that took his wife and Katie's mother. I suppose I probably should have specified that, but still, welcome to Still Creek, in Dead Rising 2, Case Zero. Case Zero was released on August 23rd, 2010. Why was this? This was an original sort of demo to Dead Rising 2, to really get to grips to what the new experience was going to be like. And this is entirely fresh, entirely new content that happens before Fortune City in Dead Rising 2. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's Dead Rising. Everyone loves a little bit of that zombie, zombie tasty action. And so I welcome you to Case Zero. Three years before Fortune City. Where hookers were cheaper. And the sex half as great. Or was it? Rebecca Chang, reporting live from just outside Las Vegas. It has been almost 12 hours since the first reports of a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas. The death toll is estimated to be over 100,000, and as many as a staggering 1 million people may be infected. Nobody likes shots, honey. But it's very important that you get this. Danny, I don't like shots. You won't have to take another one for a long time. A whole 12 hours. Maybe we'll run out. Sorry, sweetie. Daddy's got a few more. Hello? Anybody here? Even in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, you still need to pay your gas bill. Or petrol bill, depending on where you are. Katie, stay right here.
How the hell did you not notice those? It's like walking into your dining room and finding an elephant and treating it as perfectly natural. The power of Kit Kat shall stop these zombies! Zombies love Kit Kats. We're okay now, honey. They can't get in. Daddy loves you so much. But where are you going? I have to go get some more Zombrex and figure out how to get us out of here. But no, Daddy, I don't even like Zombrex. I know, honey. But it's very important. You need another one before bedtime. You stay here. I promise I'll be back as soon as I can. You're not afraid of those bad people outside? Nothing's gonna stop me from keeping you safe. And so, we are welcome to Still Creek, and we have to find some Zombrex. Hopefully there'll be a pharmacy of some sort, and obviously a maintenance bench is back, tutorials are back. And I think we've seen this all too many times before. How do you make a spiked bat? It's a bat with a box of nails. Boom! A taste of things to come. Spiked bats. And just for your information, all the combo cards that you receive within Case Zero, you will be receiving within Dead Rising 2. Perfect. Perfect, just as you say, Chuck. But it's so bizarre because you're back. Um, for those that do not know, I have already completed my Dead Rising 2 LP. And, well, it's so strange because Chuck is so slow. He is literally a moving tank. You cannot roll. You have no martial arts skills. You are basically a much inferior version of the original Chuck Green. Which is just Chuck Green three years in the future. But despite it all, I still love him, even though his shirt is kind of lame. I miss his motocross jacket, but unfortunately that was in the car that the mysterious stranger took from us. How horrible. This is the scrapyard, and it will be our safe area for rescuing survivors that we will be finding later on in the game. And you can save in the bathroom. Japanese people love bathrooms. Look at these bathrooms, and how classy it is. But I feel no need to save at this given moment in time. No. Chuck, that's not how you close a door. Not with you on the other side. Normally it would be, but not today! Did you really need a cutscene for Chuck leaving the fucking shed? I love... You know, Chuck having some more fluid animations, but still, you don't need to see a man leaving and looking over his shoulder. Is there some sort of deep, relevant subtext that I'm not getting here with my superior badger senses? And somehow we have a map of Steel Creek. As you can see, it is not very large, and there is the quarantine area that has been added on to the end of the bridge far north. As for now, there's the Brockett Gas Station, the Grumpy Dog Bowling Alley, and Uncle Bill's Department Store. That's the level of hick that you're going to get out here. <coughs> Killing zombies is much the same. You kill zombies, you smack them in the head, they die. <coughs> Let's repeat this, how do you do it? You hit them, smack them in the head, and they die. <coughs> oh god! 
It's so much more dangerous to be fighting a zombie. You Wait, what? I actually haven't gotten this cutscene before. I can't do it. I can't leave Katie. Damn it! We could have made Dead Rising 2 so much easier. But no, Chuck's responsibility <coughs> as a father is just too great. Not that that's a bad thing, I suppose. Would have saved us running around to get that fucking Zombrex, though. So as you can see, this town is completely addled with zombies with a higher population count than it really should have. Unless the majority of these are survivors that escaped Fortune... not Fortune City, Las Vegas. I'm so used to calling it Fortune City, I'd probably go back to Las Vegas and call it Fortune City. And then the egg would be on my face. Also the rice. And the full 12 star breakfast. Yes, my breakfast goes to 12 stars, motherfucker. 12 star breakfast! Well, what? No animation? Let me tell you about my 12 star breakfast. It's so strange to have a limited inventory and skill range now. I've been so... It's like you were once a god. And now you're nothing more than a humble, humble rat. Even three years ago, Chuck never smiles. He only grins. And that's case one zero or zero one rather. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to this DLC, but let's just say there's plenty in store. And to be entirely honest, we do have to give its money's worth. This is just a demo. So obviously, we're not going to find any new features. We're not going to find anything that was not in Dead Rising 2. <sighs> Car hopping, car hopping, what you gonna do about it? Car hopping. Kinda wanna bat you bitches. Holla! 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 That was more effective than it should have been. Oh, there's nothing in here, I forgot. This isn't like Case West. A hell yeah, an assault rifle. Can live with one of these. So in a zombie apocalypse, would you regret looting an ambulance? If the ambulance actually had Zombrex, but you did not need it at that moment in time, would you regret taking it in fears that another survivor might need it? I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get a whole range of cuts uh, of comments going, Fuck the world, it's all about me, because that's just the internet asshole syndrome. Because I do it too. Search for it, Chuck! Search for it! You dropped your contacts! You can't find his contacts. Chuck Green, find your contacts! Those are not contacts! Oh, thank God. Those are not your contacts, Chuck. And now, it's time for my one and only favourite moment of this DLC. 
where you ride a push cart with a bike in it that is invincible and run a bunch of people over. It doesn't really specifically state in the story, but as you can see here, it says the military is coming at 9pm and they will take Katie from you and take her into quarantine if they find her. Obviously Chuck being such a doting father, he cannot allow this to happen. Oh god, I dropped my, my assault rifle. Ah, for fuck's sake. I'll make another bat later. Whoa, whoa, woman. Woman, don't touch my utility cart. As for the record, I can't actually tell you if you can flip this over. There are no mad ramps. Actually, that's a missed opportunity in Dead Rising 2. Why weren't there any mad ramps and stunt jumps? Fortune City was like the perfect place to be doing some roof hopping. A missed opportunity by the legendary Keiji Inafune. But I do not blame him. Beep beep. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Okay, okay. I'm going to push this utility cart, and if you walk into it, it's your own fault. Oh, damn it. Why, what, why can't I... Oh, sweet, I can pick it up, even with a bike in it. This is, um... Chuck, I don't know how you got this strong, but, um... I'm pretty sure I could not look that comfortable while, uh... Lifting a broken... thing. Oh, I don't know how to put it. Just put it down. Hug time is not now, and not in three years. Wait a minute, what was that? Uh... Hold on, honey. Everything's gonna be just fine. Daddy's gotta go get a few things. Daddy, I don't feel so good. Can I have some more of that medicine now? I can't give it to you too early, honey. It's dangerous. You'll get too much. Can you fix the motorbike, Daddy? Daddy can fix anything. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That is my favorite quote of all time by Chuck Green. Daddy can fix anything. And I think it might just be my motto for the time being. Daddy can fix anything. Now we need to search around town for the five bar bike parts that we need. Save and continue. And unfortunately for all you blind run or uh, well, LPs that hate people knowing where everything is, I know where everything is, so fuck you! Yeah! yeah. I know where all the bike parts are, unless they randomise and then I'm fucked. But just so you know, I'm, I didn't actually address this issue. You might have realised earlier that um, Chuck said that it would be a whole 12 hours before Katie has to take another dose of Zombrex. This is because that the formula has, is still new. It is three years younger than it used to be and is not as potent as they made it in Dead Rising 2. Much to our glamorous joy that we would not have to wait around for 24 fucking hours, well 12 hours, we would need double the Zombrex that we did in the last game, so that means we would have had to find 14 pieces of Zombrex in a single city, which I think would have been quite nightmarish. Since we probably would have had to buy it from the pawnbrokers. So as you can see, we need the wheel, handlebars, engine, bike forks, and gasoline container. And they're not exactly hard to find, as this place is fucking tiny. No complaints there, but still. Let's get another bat out the way. Bring it on. Bring it on. 
Are we good for now? Yes, we are. I think, I think we are actually maybe just good for now. And that's better than being good now later. Or maybe good now then. I want to be good right here, right now. Can you handle how good I am? I don't think you can. But that's okay. I love you anyway. No, Chuck, don't high-five the bee! Don't high-five the bee! No! Oh, look what you did. For those just recently joining us, that was a queen. The pheromones in a dead queen caused the maggots in the zombie's head to enrage, bursting forth from, bursting forth from their skulls so that they may protect the queen that is already dead. That is the entire science behind the queens. And just to get out of the way, I've got to say it. Science! That is how I say science! So as we can see here, all the zombies are chasing dick on this van. These zombies really want the dick on this van. They want to bite into the dick on this van. I say the weirdest fucking shit sometimes, really. Hey buddy, can you help me out? I, I guess I can, what do you need? Can you get rid of these zombies? I guess I can. I mean, it's only been like three fucking years in reverse that I've killed a thousand zombies or so. Yes, Chuck still has that experience. He actually ages in reverse. Are you done yet? Come on. Thanks, friend. I'm the owner of the local pawn shop. Do you think you can help me back get back there? I'll open up the shop for you if, you if you help me out. Talk to me when you're ready to go. Let's get a move on. I mean... He actually does a completely legitimate job of getting there by himself without any forms of protection. Oh god, my bat. My, my poor bat. There we go. Look, watch. Look at him go. He does not need us. And look at that. He's there already. And we have arri arrived at the Still Creek Pawn Shop, which Dick is the owner of. Thanks for keeping me sh safe. I own this here pawn shop. I know he helped me, but I can't just go giving away things for free, so maybe I can give you a good deal. So yes, Dick is a greedy fuck. Plain and simple. There's no nothing else to him, he's not an important character. He's just a greedy plain old fuck. And I don't like him very much. Because he tries to take your money at every available opportunity. Thanks for getting me out of the mess. Is there anything you need from my store? So as you can see, you can buy Zombrex for 25 grand. Yet we already have some. A moose head for 500. Spiked bat. And a bike wheel for 5 grand. But obviously we don't have enough money for th such things like that. Maybe an assault rifle. My bike is broken down. I'm looking to get some parts. I got a wheel for sale in the shop, but it will cost you. I might have a lead on some other bike parts, and I'm afraid that info won't come cheap. I appreciate you saving me, but I got, still gotta make a living. So is my information about the bike parts worth your money? Uh, well, because I know where all the bike parts are already, this is actually kind of redundant. But... You get an achievement for it. For the first bike part, you should check the Still Creek Hotel. Papa left his key to the shed up there. And then we go to the shed and get a bike part, it's cool. Let's get out of here. And here's another survivor, Bob. As this game does not actually have any walkie-talkies or transceivers, he will be our uh, guiding light for this DLC, I suppose. 
even though he's extremely unhelpful, he doesn't really tell you any good information other than if he sees some survivors. And sometimes finding the way to get up to him is a little bit awkward. It takes a little bit of precision, well not precision platforming, but it's enough to get you, uh, will make you wonder how to get up here. Howdy fella, I didn't think you noticed me up here. Name's Bob Bla Blackrock. What are you doing up here? I barricaded the gas station, it would be safe there. No siree, buster. My daughter's missing, and I ain't moving till I find her. You li if you like, I can be your lookout. As you explore Steel Creek, he will uncover missions, and he will tell us all about them. I'll flag it down if I see anything worthwhile. You come talk to me if I give you the scoop. Let me know if you see my daughter. Howdy, Chuck. I spotted a couple walking into the bar a while ago. It looks like the man is getting pretty drunk. Maybe you should give him a hand back to the gas station. I'll give them a backhand, all right. But maybe later. Before now, we have to go and get that bike key. Or shed key, rather. Is it this way I want to be going? I believe so. Ow. Who knew free running was such painful business? Interesting place to leave a sword, but I'm not complaining. Down you go, and there's the key. I've missed the sword, it's been a while. As for now, we should go and rescue those survivors and call it a day, I suppose. I'm starting to wonder if every building around Nevada starts to look like a prison with bars in their window. Don't you... don't you tell me... what? Man, I need more booze. I think you've had enough. I ain't going anywhere until I get a frickin' drink! Well, I suppose we can sort him out that much. No, Chuck, no. Okay, good Chuck. Thanks, pal. Looks tasty. Okay, pal, that should do you. It's not safe out here, especially not for you. Let's get you to a safe place. What? Oh, one more drink. I'm still too thirsty. This is <sighs> ah, he got his drink. But unfortunately we are forced to actually liberatingly give him a drink. You, you good uh, man. Puking rally. Now I'm good to go. I guess I'll come with you now. Fusto has joined. How could you give my husband those drinks? It's bad enough we're stuck here in Nowheresville after fleeing Vegas. Now he's coming, going to be a complete mess. Look, the guy needed convincing. Now it's time to get to a safe place. Fine, all this money we want isn't worth it if I have to clean up his puke. Yep, and now we have our first two survivors. Not like we haven't done this before. Be easy to shoot them in the head and take that suitcase. Unfortunately, that's not the Chuck Green way. Would you vote Chuck Green for president? Because I sure fucking would. But then again, most people said the same things about pro wrestlers. I mean, who wouldn't Hulk want Hulk Hogan as president? Or maybe The Undertaker. But not Triple K, he's a dude. I mean, Triple H, fuck! I keep getting his name mixed up. God, you guys move slowly. There we go. Thanks, man. I thought it was all over. Seemed like a waste winning all that money for nothing. Thanks for saving me. Thanks. Uh, sorry about that. I hope this helps you. Thanks again for your kindness. Chiching. Now we can afford that bike part. Hooray! 
But that's for the end of the episode. It's been a good time and I hope to see you again. But all I have to say now is don't throw pallets recklessly. And I was going to throw this at a survivor, but I can't seem to find them. Oh, I can't actually throw the pallets. I Oh, it's because this is a safe zone. I'm suddenly really disappointed in myself. I was trying to make a really epic ending, but no. Um. Hooray. See you next episode.